So in this video, I'm going to outline five things I'm doing to invest in crypto in these very turbulent times. So we've seen so much volatility in the crypto space recently with Bitcoin going from mid 80s to mid 40s, which is a drop of nearly 50%. We've seen Ethereum go from over 5,000 to less than 3,000. And there's so much kind of up and down price action happening right now. And from the time of filming this video, we often see the price of Bitcoin randomly drop so much. There's a bit of a spike and then it slowly starts to recover again. And then a few days later, we see another drop again. So basically what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of volatility going on. Hey guys, my name is Fazy and this channel is about finance and investing. Before we begin, as usual, this video is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Please do some research on your own as well. I'm just a random person on the internet so do take everything I say with a grain of salt especially when it comes to crypto. So firstly let's talk about the reason why the prices of crypto has been so unstable namely Bitcoin and Ethereum and if you've been following this space right now you would know that recently El Salvador has made Bitcoin a legal tender and they want to attract more Bitcoin talent into the country. So basically they're literally giving $30 to citizens of the country for basically encouraging them to use Bitcoin. So $30 USD which turns out to be roughly $40 Australian. So this is a huge win for the currency and this was reported quite globally as well. So this is a step in the right direction if we want to kind of normalize the use of Bitcoin. But then on the other hand, we also see stuff like China announcing the ban of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in specific. So, and now we've actually heard this sort of thing happening in the past for many, many years. China kind of always announces that, that they're gonna ban Bitcoin. However, this time people are saying that it's going to be different and you can read up on the news in your own time as well to, to do some research. And then of course we have everybody's favorite billionaire, Elon Musk writing tweets and essentially shifting billions in a matter of no time, right? And this is a sort of world that we live in now where a person can basically spend one to two minutes just writing up a tweet and the ramifications of that is the fact that a digital asset is going to move by billions of dollars in market cap as a result. So people always claim that cryptocurrency is decentralized. However, when one person has the power to shift a currency's value by so much, is it really decentralized? Because if there was true decentralization, this would ideally not be able to happen, right? So just let me know what you guys think on that because I think it's pretty interesting. Because if all of us are to rely on cryptocurrency and not fiat currency, we have to know that this currency is reliable. And if one person can just shift the value of this asset by so much, is it really that reliable? So that's just one argument that I think could be worth exploring more into. Once again, I haven't looked too much into it, but I think just looking at it on a high level basis, I think it's pretty important to kind of ask these questions. Now, another big fear that people like to have is the question of can Bitcoin or cryptocurrency go to zero? Can countries, can the US ban cryptocurrency? So let's start off with the first question of can cryptocurrency or Bitcoin go to zero? Now, personally, I don't think this will happen, but of course, this is just my opinion. I'm just a random person on the internet. So do do some research on your own as well. It is something that is possible in my view. However, theoretically, it should not happen. It is unprobable or it is not probable for this to happen because too many individuals and too many institutions hold Bitcoin now. And if we do see such a large drop in the price of this asset, I do imagine that a lot of institutions and whales and individuals are just going to buy the dip and kind of keep the price more sustained if it is at a decent sort of level, if you guys get what I mean. Because right now, Bitcoin is kind of getting a bit more mainstream where basically every single person is talking about it. Everybody wants to invest in this sort of currency. So I feel like if it just goes down in value, I think a lot of people are just going to accumulate and just keep on buying more. At least that's just my view anyways, but do not take any of this as financial advice. I'm going to keep on giving disclaimers in this video because I think it's so important for me to mention this. Um, I'm just a random person on the internet. Just keep that in mind. So basically this whole issue of cryptocurrency going to zero, I don't really worry about this in the slightest at all, but I do understand that it is a possibility if it was to happen. But for me, it's really not worth worrying about. So we can basically remove the whole argument for this currency going to zero because too many people and institutions are just going to buy into it and just keep the price afloat. Now let's talk about the second question of the US possibly banning this currency, right? Now this is something that could be more probable because we've seen China and some other countries going against Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency. So this is more of a likely development that could happen. But even with this, I do think that it is quite unlikely. And the reason 
reason being is once again, as I said, a lot of individuals and also big corporations hold Bitcoin and cryptocurrency on their balance sheet. And we're talking about large publicly listed companies like Tesla, Square, and Coinbase, all of these companies have Bitcoin on their sheets. And if Bitcoin was to get banned or something like that, I would imagine that there is going to be quite a lot of backlash, not just from the individuals, but the actual corporations as well. And if history has taught us anything when it comes to this sort of stuff, when corporate interests are at conflict, I feel like the government and the politicians are much more willing to kind of consider it because it's the corporates that are at hand. Whereas if it was just the individuals, I feel like the individuals won't have that much power to kind of compete with this sort of law. So basically what I'm trying to say is that since these large companies have Bitcoin and cryptocurrency on their balance, sheet they would absolutely not allow this to happen and they would pretty much go against it there may even be lawsuits and things like that so something like this i try not to worry about now on this whole topic i saw an interesting video from a person called tony that i follow on tiktok and i want to show you guys this part the second one would be the u.s government banning bitcoin but i previously talked about why i think we're already past that that's because too many u.s companies have bitcoin on their balance sheet if there was a ban, they would sue the US government all the way to the Supreme Court. And say what you want about the US government, at least they have corporate interests at heart. Now, once again, guys, take everything said in that video with a grain of salt. After all, it is coming from TikTok, but I do think the points that he's raised are fairly valid. Now, guys, when you think about the United States of America, there is just probably one thing that comes to mind apart from guns, <laughs> which is the fact that they have a lot of freedom, as they say, right? right? They have a lot of freedom, a lot of liberty and that's what they like to preach to the rest of the world and i feel like if cryptocurrency was to get banned or any sort of this sort of stuff was to happen i would feel that this would infringe a lot on their freedom and this would basically go against the whole idea of their country and with that freedom we do see a lot of people and companies suing each other right so you have the freedom to sue other people sue other companies and also the governments as well. So basically what I'm trying to say is the fact that I don't think the American people or even the corporations would settle for cryptocurrency being banned because it basically goes against the individual interests. But now since corporations are involved as well, I don't think the government would let that happen. So that's why personally, I try not to worry too much about the US banning cryptocurrency. And the reason why I'm not mentioning Australia banning cryptocurrency is the fact that I don't really think it's going to happen. I feel like if America was to fall, then I think the rest of the countries may follow along. But Australia on its own, I don't think they would make that action to ban cryptocurrency. I feel like ATO and the ASIC have kind of accepted the fact that there is going to be cryptocurrency. They are going to try and regulate it by obviously making people pay taxes on it. But apart from that, I feel like they've pretty much accepted the fact that cryptocurrency is going to be around for the future. Let me know what you guys think on this, by the way. So this brings us to what I'm doing when it comes to investing in cryptocurrency. Now, guys, just keep in mind that this is just personal to me. This is not a recommendation. I'm not telling you to do this at all. This is, as I said, it just works for me. So please do some research on your own and think about what you want to do. This is, of course, not a recommendation. It is just what I'm doing. Okay, let's get into it. Number one, holding cash. Now, apart from the usual ETFs and stocks that I buy, I've also started to deposit some money into the broker that I use, which is Coinspot, to essentially have money available when the right opportunity arises, when the price of Bitcoin or Ethereum falls. So essentially, the aim for me here is to buy the dip if the price of those two currencies significantly goes down in value, and I'll be able to buy it and essentially just lower my cost base and keep that average price low. Now at the moment, Bitcoin and Ethereum are the only two currencies that I'm really into right now. I know I should be looking at other currencies as well and that is on the list of things that I have to research. But for the moment, I'm just gonna be looking at these two currencies as this is what I'm comfortable with. Now, it's pretty interesting that now the whole crypto community looks at Bitcoin and Ethereum as kind of like boomer currencies or kind of like blue chip cryptocurrencies. It's, it's pretty funny. And if you don't know what blue chip is, blue chip is basically stable companies that have been around for quite a long time. Companies like the big four banks in Australia and kind of these stable companies, right? And it's pretty funny that they apply the same terminology to cryptocurrencies, even though cryptocurrencies are nowhere near as stable. But if you compare Bitcoin and Ethereum to some other riskier currencies, you could probably argue that they are more boomer coins and they are more like blue chip coins anyway just keep in mind though anything with crypto is quite risky even though they may be referred to as boomer currencies or blue chip 
coins, it is still quite a risky thing. Nothing is too safe when it comes to crypto. So essentially holding cash is going to allow me to capitalize on these opportunities if a large drop was to come. Now, if you guys do want to check out CoinSpot, there should be a link in description where you and I can both get $10 in free Bitcoin. There should be a link in bio, link in description, go check it out. Number two, I've created open orders. So in CoinSpot, I basically created a buy order for Bitcoin at $38,000 Australian. And I might set a few other orders at 30K Australian and maybe high 20s Australian AUD. And the reason why I've done that is because news could strike at any moment. Cryptocurrency is quite volatile. And in the past where I've not set these orders, the price has gone down and then it's gone back up again because there's been a bit of a kind of like a V-shaped sort of recovery. And I've missed out on the purchase and I've missed out on buying that currency at that lower price. And that kind of sucks because it would have been good to get in at that small point and kind of capitalize on that bit of gain. So to combat this, I'm gonna set these orders to make sure that I can buy into these currencies and keep on lowering my cost base. Because the thing about the crypto market that we all need to understand is the fact that this thing is literally 24 seven. It's insane, right? Like we have stocks where stocks trade for in Australia from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So that's about six hours and you can basically log off at 4 p.m. and just enjoy your day or whatever. And then you have the Forex market, which is more like 24 hours a day and five days a week. So that's a bit more intense. You do have the weekends off. But then the third level is crypto where this thing is literally 24 seven. And you know, if you are watching charts every single day, it is just too much of a headache. It's insane. Unless you really love that sort of stuff. But you know, surprisingly I've got a life and I want to kind of just not think about this too much and just set my orders and just do other stuff in the meantime. Number three, not buying meme coins, hype coins or coins. <laughs> now, full disclosure, guys, I do own some Dogecoin and I've only bought this to be part of the culture and I'm fully across the fact that this could go to zero and it could crash 80% and I fully understand that this money could be lost at any time. And recently, we've been seeing so much hype for these meme coins and these hype coins originating from TikTok initially and basically what these companies do and how this works is that these people will basically create a random coin with a funny name and then what they will do is that they will reach out to influencers and people who have large followings and they'll basically ask those influencers to promote this coin and in exchange these companies may give those influencers those coins at like a very low rate so basically they can capitalize on this opportunity and once these influencers promote the coin of course, the price is going to rise up so much in value and then the influencers will basically dump the coin, make a lot of money and the people who made the coin are also going to be making a lot of money and the only person left holding the bag is going to be you and me. And that is exactly why I try to avoid these coins at all costs. So, you know, the likes of Safe Moon and some other random coins that are out there like OnlyFans coin and all these random dog coins. People have been talking about having a dog portfolio. It's so hilarious and so weird. <laughs> but um, that's why I try to avoid these because it is so risky and you're the one who's going to be left holding the bag. And it's so easy to get caught into it because when you see these influencers promoting it and you see the comments on TikTok and all the social media websites of people just shilling it and promoting it, you're the person that's gonna feel FOMO. And I felt it as well, but it's, you just gotta fight it and you just have to not invest into it. So whenever I see comments like that on my videos, on my TikTok videos, I delete those straight away because I don't want anyone else to buy into these coins and get scammed essentially. Number four, dollar cost averaging. Now I think that for me anyways, this is pretty important. And recently I've been dollar cost averaging into a portfolio of Ethereum and Bitcoin. So right now I'm buying about $99 per fortnight of Ethereum and Bitcoin. And this adds up to be roughly just under $2,600 per year. Now, personally, I'm pretty happy with that. As a percentage of my overall portfolio, I think that this is a decent enough allocation. And essentially, since I get paid fortnightly, it works out pretty well. It just comes out as an automatic direct debit. And the app that I'm using to do this is Bamboo. This is an Aussie fintech company. You may even have heard of it as well. If you guys wanna go check it out, there should be a link in description as well, where you and I can both once again get $10 worth of free Bitcoin. You can go check it out. This video is not sponsored by anyone, just affiliate links, that's all. So as I said before, I don't want to monitor the crypto market 24 7 it's not worth it for me to do that and dollar cost averaging is a great strategy for me anyways to do that 
and over time I should have a decent portfolio which has the average price over time. And lastly number five keeping cryptocurrency less than five percent of my overall portfolio. Now the reason why I say net worth and not portfolio is because net worth basically factors in a lot of other stuff like emergency fund savings and superannuation and some other cash as well and I feel like portfolio is a much better way to put it and right now I'm definitely below that five percent mark so this really fits my risk appetite and the reason why I've set this rule is because I really want to control myself and not get too caught into crypto when it comes to FOMO and some other meme coins and some other you know random stuff as well because as human psychology goes we always get kind of carried away when it comes to stuff like this when we see other people making lots of money ideally we want to just jump in there right but that's not the right way to do it and this is going to keep me in check so if the price of bitcoin or ethereum was to dip then i'll be buying more but i'm going to make sure that it stays under that five percent mark no matter what so who knows guys once i start to learn more about cryptocurrency i might even start to allocate more than five percent or of that five percent i might allocate 1% to more riskier and interesting projects which I think could do really really well while still kind of controlling the overall risk profile of my portfolio. There's so many opportunities that you could do but for me I think that is the right way to play it. As I start to learn more I can start to explore those riskier but interesting opportunities later on in the future but for now less than 5% is the way to go for me anyways. Now guys if you enjoyed this video check out this one. This is about the crypto crash that happened earlier this year when Elon Musk tweeted that Tesla won't be accepting Bitcoin anymore. This basically outlines my thoughts on crypto and all the hate that Elon Musk got so do check this video out if you enjoyed this one and let me know if you like more Bitcoin and Ethereum and crypto content because I think it's pretty interesting to talk more about other stuff other than stocks so let me know guys and thanks for watching please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one bye now number one number one holding